Welcome one, welcome all to another Kingdom Hearts World Tour. Today it's going to be Atlantica. If you're unfamiliar with the World Tour videos that I do, these are basically just exploration videos of the various worlds within the Kingdom Hearts franchise. We're doing them in order. We just kind of walk around, or in this case, we swim around and we check out all the details that the, the development team, sorry, put into making these worlds. Um, examining sort of the environments, what little details may be hidden within the worlds, you know. It's really just a chill series, and we just kind of vibe and look around and explore. So let's go ahead and get started. This is where I chose to start for Atlantica, because it's basically where you start when you come to this world within the story. There's not a whole lot in here. I mean, it's a just kind of a big round room in this little cavern, this grotto. I think this is Tranquil gro uh, Grotto. You have a save point here within this clamshell, this really big clamshell. I like that the, <laughs> I like that the, the like seaweed here, it moves at such a like low frame rate. Get a better look. Yeah, it moves at a really low frame rate. Uh, was the stuff on the rock like the flat textures on the rock? I don't know if that's like coral or like just different kinds of like seaweed or whatever. Got to get reacquainted with the swimming controls. Some more low frame rate seaweed of some kind. Or, or not really sure what plant exactly it's supposed to be. Oh, there's a starfish over here. A little red uh, starfish on the ground. This is a big one. See, this one moves at a higher frame rate. Or maybe it's just less noticeable. It looks like it's moving at a higher frame rate than all the smaller seaweeds. So, oh, and there's another one. That one's a bit more green. As opposed to this kind of bluish green or teal kind of colored seaweeds. There's two more starfish over here. Some bubbles just popped up from nowhere. Also, keep in mind, you know, Sora's not like a merman. He's just got kind of like a, a dolphin body. Um, Goofy gets turned into a sea turtle and Donald is a octoduck, I guess. He's an octopus duck or a ductopus, I don't know. Some more seaweed. <laughs> That's it's going to be a lot of what's going on here. The tridents uh, point you in the direction to get to the palace and to Triton's throne. Pretty sure that goes to the outside as well. We're going to follow the trident. Got these little. Uh, I'm not sure what they are. They're like little geyser like holes in the rock face and in the ground and stuff. I'm not a hundred percent sure what exactly they are. We're going to go ahead and head into the larger area. There's another one right here at the edge. Some seaweed coming right out of the rock. I don't know. Does that happen normally? Um, there's another starfish down there. Some more seaweed. So, I'm going to go into the next room and clear out all the enemies and then carry on with the tour. Oh, there's another trident. Undersea Valley. Okay, here we are. Now, this room is actually really, really big. You got tridents, again, pointing the way to find your way to tri uh, the palace, uh, King Triton's throne room. Again, this room is really big. Got a clam here. This one's red. You have to hit that with fire to open it. I've already opened all these, so I'm not going to bother doing it again. For regular clams, you can just kind of smack them, and they'll open. A lot more seaweed to look at. Look at that. A lot more seaweed. More seaweed. Got another clam down here. It's one of those whack and it'll open ones. I missed. That's okay. Another one of these weird little geyser things. They do push you up if you swim over them. Got some bubbles that keep coming just kind of out of nowhere. I don't know where the bubbles are coming from. Look at all the seaweed. What is this? A shell? There's a shell over here on the ground. So that's new. We haven't seen one of those yet. There's a crack in the wall right there where you can see into... Um, I can't remember what that area is called, but you can kind of see into that high water flow area. Actually, I think that's the area that's pushing up through the center. Because there's a crack in the wall. Let's go up. I think that's exactly what that is. This giant area in the center. Swim over it, and it will push you up as high as it can. See, if there wasn't an invisible ceiling, we would be able to go over the rock faces down here into the greater ocean but it's just 
the deep blue void out there. We don't need to go out there. There's another shell, along with all these little weird plants on the rocks and the seaweed and stuff. And there's the dolphin. You can use him before you get the dolphin kick or whatever to get up the stronger currents. There's another shell over here. Another one of these weird geysers pumping out some bubbles and some water flow. There's another clam up there. Oh, look, more seaweed! Nice. All right. Enemies, a fair bit of enemies typically spawn in here. Uh, especially right under these little areas. Yeah, we already saw that clam. The other way I saw into here from the grotto was through that hole right there. So you can even see the save point clam. That'll take you back over there. So there's two ways in and out of that area. There's the dolphin friend again. Now, if you go down this way, you got these little tunnels, right? And see, there's not, there's really nothing in them. There's really no point to them because I can go through this tunnel here, and it's just gonna spit me right back out in the exact same area that I was already at. See? Ta-da! Now let's go through this tunnel. I'm not sure. Okay, this tunnel actually takes us into another room. I'm going to clear those guys out. I actually out. don't remember this room very well. I don't think I come through here a whole lot. There's just more of these little things stuck on this column in the center. And some seaweed. More seaweed. This takes us into the uh, this little current area. That's the way we... No, up there is the way we came in. So where does this area go? Oh, that goes back out to the main area. Okay, so if we just let the, this current take us, it's going to pump us right back out. We're not going to let it do that. Yeah, come on, come on, come on, get in there. You did, you get in there, there we go. I'm going to clear those guys. Okay, so this is that center area. If you walk, or rather swim into this, it'll shoot you right back out into the larger room. Uh, don't touch these little uh, sea urchin fellas. I'm pretty sure they blow up. Well, let's, ow. Well, they sting you. Okay, they don't blow up, they just sting you. Alright, that makes sense. I thought they self-destructed, I couldn't remember. I was wrong. There's not... There's really not much in here. Again, if you swim into that, it'll throw you back out to that main center area. So we're gonna keep following the Tritons into this cove. I'm not gonna bother clearing these guys. Uh, you'll often find white mushrooms in here, and, you know, you hit them all with stop, and the pink... I think it's called the pink agaricus shows up. You try to get like a high score by hitting them with stop, and then you gotta like land a really high combo. If you're trying to like farm all the items, just a quick tip the pink agaricus here is really hard to land enough combo hits on. Do the one in deep jungle instead. The one here is really not worth it. There's a little hole here. I'm not sure where that goes. Some more seaweed. There's another clam in there. We've already gotten it. So we're just gonna. It's like some moss or something. Oh, some more holes. The guy's just floating there. We're going to keep going up. Okay, so here we are. There's actually a few different entrances to different areas in here. There's a blue clam. As you probably figured, you hit that with a blizzard and it should open. Oh, look, more seaweed. The tritons again pointing to the palace, which goes through that hole. We'll go there in a minute. There's another clam down here. Oh, there's two shells over here on the ground. Some starfish and shells kind of stuck on or maybe in the wall. A little completely 2D textures. We're so deep in the sea, like, we can't even see light from the surface very well. Some bubbles coming out of the rock for some reason. This area here, you can take this as a shortcut, I think, to another area. Um, there's like a geyser. Or rather, it's a shortcut to this area, because there's like a geyser down there that's under a big chest. You pop that up, and I think it gives you an orichalcum. But that's in another part of the world. This is Ariel's Grotto right here. We can go ahead and go inside. I don't know if it'll let us. Thankfully, there's no enemies to clear out in here. This is where we actually have some stuff to look at. We got a barrel. And, uh, is it breakable? Guess not. It's a book, surprisingly in good shape, given that it's in water.
to see it. Nothing in here is breakable. We can make the globe turn, though. Oh, wait, the barrel was breakable. All right. Make the uh, globe turn. Got a clock. Some stuff you can, you know, actually make move when you hit it. What, what does she call these? Are these her thingamabobs? I can't remember what she calls what, to be honest. It's a bunch of gems. She's actually got treasure down here. It's this little ballerina thing. Can I examine it? We can make it move. Plays a little music, too. It's an old record player. Another barrel. You can see an empty chest that's already been opened. Can I break this barrel? Yes. A telescope. Uh... What is that? Is that a pipe or a horn of some kind? I'm not sure. Some more luggage that I guess has been thrown overboard from ships. That was a neat little design on, on there. What is that? Like a griffin? It kind of looks like it's supposed to be a griffin, but it doesn't look entirely natural. Another book that is in surprisingly good shape. It's another chest, not one that we can get, next to a bottle and another pot. Another chest, another bottle. It could be a wine bottle. Not sure. Could be ale. That's a nice design. I actually wouldn't mind having that myself. Make like a good flower pot. Let's see. Is that a boot? Is that a shoe? It is. One shoe. One low polygon shoe. Okay. There's a box. Kind of kind of looks like a cardboard box. I'm surprised it's even in good shape. A musty mirror, or maybe a picture frame? No picture? That's definitely a bell. Oh, a bunch of books. She's got a bunch of books in here. Certainly she can't read them, because they're like soaked. That's a picture frame, for sure. And here's Ariel herself. No, we don't want to add her to our party. It's not too bad. Ugh, sometimes I accidentally mermaid kick when I'm trying to go up. It's another vase. Uh, what was that? Like a little trumpet? I think? Some more books, another little vase, a cup. It's like a little dog house. Or maybe like a little cat house? I'm not sure. Some more pots. What is that? I'm really not sure what that is. What is this supposed to be? Certain. Some more pots, some more bases. There's a crate, some more chests. Another box with that weird griffin on the side of it. Oh, we got some candles, some books, some candles, and some more books, and a frame. Was that a pedestal? She just grabs anything that falls into the ocean, doesn't she? She grabs a lot of pots. And a lot of books that she can't read because they're soaked. Like, I'd imagine the ink at this point is worn off. A bell inside of a little hut. Guess that came off of a ship. So another chest. A lot of pots. Let's see. There's another box crate. Another picture frame. What is this, like an incense holder? Maybe a candle holder, candlestick holder? Some more pots, some more books, another griffin chest. Dang it, stop mermaid kicking. Another, oh, that's like a big mug. It's like a giant mug, almost. A lot of pictures, there's a lot of picture frames up top with no pictures in them. Are they just shipping picture frames that fell overboard? And way more books up here. Another box, another crate. I think this is the top. We got a teapot, it looks like, or maybe like a water pot for watering plants. There's some more pots and bases. And of course, where you put the uh, little blue trident, the jewel trident thing that's supposed to unlock the keyhole for this world. I wonder where the other shoe is, the other low polygon shoe. Flounder's also in here, right? Yes. It's right, it's right there. Can you talk to Flounder? You can. Okay. Let's head to the... Well, we'll head to the throne room in just a moment. There's actually another place we can go to. It only takes, uh, like, two more entrances to a room for the enemies to reappear. But right here, we can go into this area. This is where Ariel gets approached by Flotsam... What's their names? Flotsam, Jetsam, and Ursula. 
got like some moss or like some seaweed or whatever growing on here. We got some, uh, some starfish on it. There's like three there, one, two there. Lots of new seaweed. There's some coral. There's some coral down here on the ground. More low frame rate seaweed and some really big coral. Those are huge. Another clam. Oh, there are enemies in here. Didn't think there were enemies in here. All right. I'll go ahead and check for more. Okay, I think that's all there is. Anyways, really big coral in here. And low frame rate seaweed. Can we, uh, can we see out the top? Okay, we got the sun up there, so we can kind of see... This is closer to the surface of the water. Because we can see the sunlight coming through the, the ocean. Now let's head to the throne room. You can see the palace off in the distance. This is, I guess this is kind of like a courtyard leading to the palace. I guess this is an Atlantean fixture. It doesn't look like anything that would have been man-made. Some coral down here. We got a lot of little clam shells stacked over a pretty large one. It's got some other types of shells as well. A lot of coral. There's a little dip in the ground where there's some shells down here stuck in the wall, stuck in the ground. This purple coral really kind of outlines this pathway really well. Got these little swirly pillars. A little bit of like moss and greenery. That's laid or grown over the top of them. Some more over here. With some 2D coral textures. Or maybe it's seaweed textures. That just like aren't moving. I don't know if it's supposed to be seaweed exactly. Or if it's like something more solid. It's an Atlantean light fixture. Really big, too. I like the lighting effects in this game. Like, for an old game, you know, they did... They put a lot of attention to detail and trying to, like, make it actually look like things were emitting some light. You know, the game's pretty old, but they did a really good job. Another light fixture, because they really, they really did a good job with the lighting effects right here. As you can see, there's not really... There's not really a lot of light, like, bouncing off of Sora himself, so that's where kind of, like, the limitations come in. All you see is the little light effect bleed that kind of comes in around this area. There, There's a uh, clamshell. You hit it with thunder. It'll open up some red and purple coral with a lot of uh, little clamshells and some, I guess this would be, like, a snail shell or something like that. Some more Atlantean light fixtures. This area over here, you'll uh, find the white trinity of this world right here. I'm not sure what this thing is. Is this... It's a giant shell. Maybe from like a giant hermit crab or something. This thing is huge. Imagine a crab or whatever that came out of this. Actually, I don't even know if a crab came out of this. This thing's huge. I like the glowy effect on the seaweed or whatever over here. Oh, there's some more greenery growing on the rocks and stuff here on the wall. More clamshells, another clamshell you can hit and open up. There's some light fixtures up there as, as well as a, uh, oh, stop mermaid kicking. As well as a trident symbol. And there's the palace there off in the distance. I, I know it's weird, like, it's not a great looking texture, you know, it's technical limitations of the game and everything. But it's just something so charming about these old games and how they handled things off in the distance, how they're really just 2D images way off in the background. But how they made the road look and everything going to it is just really well done to me. Especially for a game this old. I just want to take a set and appreciate that. Let's go ahead and go to the throne room. And there he is. There's the king and his throne room. I wish we could explore more of Atlantis itself. Because it looks like there's a lot of 
wall or maybe seaweed or something around the throw room. Could be pillars. So safe point clam right there, Sebastian. He's got these little bubble fixtures, light bubble fixtures. The pillars look really nice in here. And it looks like it stretches on for a good little while. I just wish we could have like actually swam through all of Atlantis to get here. Like the city itself. Okay, he's got a little light source in here. Try to get a better look. Where the sun is coming in. So he has that perfectly lined up. Probably when the sun is at like high noon. It comes in directly overhead. His throne's very nice too. Talk to Sebastian. Throne's got a really grand design. It's actually on like a really thin pillar. So the seat's on a really thin pillar. But, you know, everything, you know, the water kind of alleviates the weight of a lot of things. I would assume this is made of some kind of stone. It looks really solid, rock or stone. What's the design down here in this little area? It goes around. It's almost a hidden Mickey. The ears are too small. This is more like a hidden Winnie the Pooh head. Because of how small the ears are. But that's kind of what it looks like to me. There's some coral down here. Gotta protect the coral. Some non- some static seaweed. Kind of like the larger bits that we saw on the way here. Those aren't moving at all. Okay. Thank you for your time, King. You dig the throne. We're gonna go check out the rest of your kingdom. Okay, if you come back to this area, we can swim further upstream here. Just gotta have the dolphin kick. That goes back under there, so that's not the way we wanna go. Come on, oh, I'm going the wrong way. Come on. The current's really strong here. They even got seaweed on the wall that's like being blown by the current. That's actually a very nice detail. It's actually really cool. This will take us to the sunken ship. Normally you'll find a shark swimming around here. If he's not, then there's probably harmless. All right, so here's the ship, the sunken ship. I'm not sure if it was a pirate ship or just like something else. It's already got like stuff growing on it on the, uh, the post here. The sail is completely torn up. I mean, the ship's in bad shape, like really bad shape. Oh, look at this seaweed. See, I don't, is this other parts of the ship? Just look like it looks like these are separate boats or maybe other ships that have crashed. It's an anchor. You can swim through it. It's pretty stuck down there. So. Wooden planks, a lot of damage. That's a lot of damage. See so another boat over here. Looks like the remains of a boat. Those had to have crashed and sunk far before this one did. We've got the windows on the outside. It's not a bad looking ship. But it has seen better days. Oh, it's got a little design on it here. That's nice. Let's go into the ship. Hey, there's really not much in here. Got some crates that we can break. If you know, if you can hit them, I can't. Again, if you can hit them, because I can't. You can exit the ship through there or through the uh, this window that the shark previously crashed through. Looks like some more uh, windows, maybe. I can go into this lower area too. I think. Yep. It's not like a separate room, it's still part of the same room. We got another clam down here. Other than that, there's really nothing down here. Looks like the fish have looted this. Maybe the mermaids did. Because there ain't nothing in this ship. Uh, lanterns or something on the wall? Yeah. Alright, let's go ahead and exit. 
There's some other places we can go. Over here. There's a little button that you can press. Uh, you'll do that in the story to get further into the story. I can't remember which way this goes. It goes to the Undersea Gorge. Okay, so this is where... Uh, you'll activate that geyser, it'll shoot up next to Ariel's Grotto. So yeah. We don't want to go that way right now. We want to go this way. So once you come in here, this is on our way to where like Ursula lives. You can tell because it looks all red. Evil. Got... Are these... Are these a uh, type of rock or coral or something? I'm not sure about that. Got these little red evil geysers and got some like vines, some seaweed vines or something hanging from the walls in here. This way it takes you to a little area where you can save. There's also another one of those smack em clams. There's your save point. Is there anything else even in here? Nope. I'm gonna head on to Ursula's palace. You got this little thing on the wall to do, uh, direct you to where she lives. And it's that big ugly thing right there. That's where we're going. That's her house. Okay, as I was saying, I don't know if this is like a hollowed out sea monster. It kind of looks like it. Got all these little guys that she turned into whatever the hell these things are. They're kind of creepy looking. These are clearly people or m mer people. Maybe they were that were turned into whatever the hell these things are supposed to be. Freaky looking. This is their whole existence. They just sit there all bug eyed and just kind of stare at you. Just waiting for the pain to stop. Can relate. Got some more vines. They're they're completely 2D. They're just hanging there because if you angle it just right, it almost entirely dis disappears. There it goes. Can't see it. That's how 2D and how flat it is. Ursula's lair. This is where you fight her the first time. Doesn't look like there's any enemies in here. Can hit this guy. Another uh, urchin that'll sting ya if you run into it. If you ever have trouble with this fight, just, you know, focus on the cauldron, hitting it with magic and stuff. She's got a little vanity area over, over here. A place that she probably needs to spend a lot more time at, and it still won't help. I love how these look like spider webs. They really went all out to try and make her look it's exceptionally evil. But... Since it looks like we're in the in, on the inside of a sea monster, I really don't know what that stuff is. I just noticed that these little like dots on the wall, they're not moving like in Monstro, but they remind me of the inside of Monstro. That's really interesting. So yeah, we are... You know, I thought it was just like a rock face or something originally shaped like a monster, but I think we're actually on the inside of a dead monster, sea monster. Yeah, with the ribs and everything. She flees into this thing. Can't go in there, though. I don't even know where it leads. But that's how she got away. What are these little things? Are, are they clamshells? I don't think so. Are they just really aggressive-looking clamshells? They kind of look like... No, they can't be clamshells. They look weird. They're not shaped like clamshells. They're too round. Weird-looking some funky evil looking coral or roots or something something growing in this thing yeah I just realized that this kind of looks like the inside of Monstro a little bit just old and dead and rotten nasty looking I don't know if these are perfumes or what can you even use perfume underwater I would assume not I love how they got like an image of like the seat and the table in the mirror so that the mirror actually looks like it's reflecting something, but obviously you can't see yourself. Again, technical limitations. Okay, there's not a whole lot left, so let's proceed. Got 
gonna exit here through the mouth. I wanna know what that thing was. Okay, right across here is where you go to fight the Ursula boss. I wanna see if I can still get in there, even though we've already done the fight. Get in there. Oh, it's actually walled off. You can't go to that area. Oh, okay. So, I mean, it was basically just a big abyss, a big void where you fought giant Ursula. But good to know, it gets walled off after the fight. Huh. We'll just let this thing shoot us on back out then. Because that's all there is to see. There you go. There's the Atlantica World Tour. The next one will be Halloween Town. That one ought to be pretty fun. Uh, if you like this video, please leave a like, hit the like button, and don't forget to subscribe for Kingdom Hearts content. At the time of this posting, Kingdom Hearts news has been kind of dry, so there's not been a whole lot to talk about or post about, so I'm kind of just filling out content, sort of doing stuff when I can, trying to keep a little bit of momentum going. When, you know, we start getting some Kingdom Hearts news, things are going to get really interesting at that point, and I also plan on finishing, uh, the Dream Drop Distance playthrough, maybe even doing a Kingdom Hearts 3 playthrough in the future, so keep an eye out for that. Again, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next World Tour video.